right, so my name is James Tandon. I'll be speaking about open chip design, the last mile, and open source. So just curious, show of hands, how many of you have pushed to GitHub on an open repository? Who've, who's pushed open source there? Okay, quite a few of you. How many of you have been involved with open source hardware at all? Maybe published an open hardware design? A couple people. All right. So if you've worked with uh, Arduino or Raspberry Pi, you've also worked with open hardware. Um, Arduino clones actually are available now. So they're available for open source, PCBs, and schematics. And you can use, say, KCAD, which is an open source software program for doing the PCB layout. And many examples are online, so you can actually download that. But um, what about this device right here? This device right here, the Atmega 328P. This device takes a, quite a bit more. It's more like a black box to a lot of people. Most people don't even look inside of it. And what actually goes on is a really big song and dance that happens in the background. There are foundry companies in the background, so Intel, TSMC, UMC, who manufacture these chips in mass. I'm curious, has anybody heard of TSMC here in the, the audience? Okay, quite a few. So for those of you who don't know, manufacture NVIDIA chips, Apple chips, Qualcomm chips. So they're basically a major hub for doing a lot of the chip design. Intel, of course, we know. Cadence, Synopsys, and Mentor. Anybody knows these companies? All right, so a few people here. So these companies, right, they spend, you can spend maybe $2 million a year in premium just for the software. So how do you actually go to do the open source chip design? And there's now a free option that's available. And so one thing that I've been working with um, is kind of a hobby, is working through the eFabless platform to work with their open lane design to take Verilog code, which you can learn through either like, uh, like one of the, like uh, ASIC World or one of these other websites. They're available online. And you can go ahead and design your own hardware project. You can actually design your own processor, uh, PWM, generator, these kinds of things. Uh, Skywater PDK, this was a foundry that was spun out of uh, Cypress Semiconductor. Now this foundry, it's really old in terms of its process technology. So maybe 20 years ago, they actually developed this. But we were actually able to get funding from uh, Google with their sponsorship to go ahead and design and get maybe 100 chips free, for free, right? So there are many open source projects now that are available. They've already gone through eight tape outs. So you can actually find the RISC-Duino. Uh, there's also the SHA-3 miner. So somebody decided they wanted to build a Bitcoin miner, right? And um, a colleague of mine, uh, Pierre, who, at the University of Utah, he actually designs uh, open source FPGAs. And uh, this FPGA here was actually taped out through uh, eSilicon and their pipeline there, okay? And uh, my personal passion project right now is grafting this risk duino right now to an ML accelerator. There are actually some uh, open source projects available. If you haven't heard of it, Berkeley has produced the Chipyard uh, repository. They've got the Gemini ML accelerator, Tensil.ai. Unfortunately, they were uh, Y Combinator funded, but they, were, they ran out of funding, unfortunately. You can download it from GitHub. You can download it from GitHub though, it's open source, right? So download one of these and then maybe try and push that through and I'm kind of trying to push that right now. Um, very curious if anybody here would be interested in trying to work on such a project, I'd be very happy to talk to you. And uh, yeah, that's all. Any questions? Discussion? All right. Any questions from the audience? Yes, please. Yeah. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Uh -huh. Is it going? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe I didn't figure it out, but it looked like 
the processor slot is what you're aiming at, but it's actually a machine learning extension to the processor? So it would be the chip right here goes in this little spot right here. That's where the risk Duino goes. Uh -huh. And an ML accelerator would fit there in the corner. Oh, okay, so this is not ARM anymore because no. ARM is proprietary. So no, you're this replacing is... ARM with something called RISC? So this is RISC V. It's RISC V. RISC okay, five. that's what so I was... Yeah, it's an open source okay. uh, processor. So every right, that makes chip, sense now. Yeah, every chip that tapes out has a RISC V processor right there. But RISC Duino is the Arduino compatible. Okay. Yeah. Other questions, please. Please. Assuming these machine learning accelerators are going to be primarily for inference, right? They're like for edge computing to accelerate mm -hmm. the inference? Process? On this process, yeah, because there's only 10 square millimeters, so it's fairly small. If you want to do heavy training, then it's going to be, you're going to need, you're going to need off chip memory and you're going to need a lot of pipeline. There's only, I want to say, 38 pins around the outside, and you need at least that many plus more for. An SD RAM bus, so GDDR RAM, maybe two. This might be a dumb question, but have mm -hmm. you seen anyone like try to cluster these kinds of chips together to try and run larger models, like a language model, for example? Yes, yes. I have seen people try to do that. Doing a language model on this would be difficult. But um, I'll well, tell you. One of them, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if you put a hyper RAM, a Cypress hyper RAM on there, it has a small pin count. And if you're willing to do to wait a long time, then it can process it. But it it it's going to it, it's got a lot like maybe 330 billion parameters, right? So that's going to be a while. You'll probably want to start with something small like a tiny ML. So you're doing um, uh, like uh, anomaly detection or wake words. And then if enough people actually start to want to use these chips, then you can use that money to fab out on not a 50, on a 30, 130 nanometer process, but 28 TSMC, which would be that much better. But yeah, keep it open source though. That would be the idea here. Cool. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? All right, thank you very much.